Hey guys, all right, today we're gonna do chapter eight, section five, which is called Products with Radicals. So in the last section, we talked about how to actually simplify radicals down using our exponential form. Now we're gonna do products with radicals, and we can change it into exponential forms to make that easier for us. This is a pretty easy section. Again, this is all stuff that we've done before in exponential form. All we're doing now is moving it over into radical form. So the first thing we have is the root of a product theorem, and that says that if you have x times y to the 1 over n, okay, what you can do is you can split that up into x to the 1 over n times y to the 1 over n, and that's in your power form. In the radical form, we can change it the same way. So again, you've got that x times y underneath that root. That's the same thing as splitting it up into two separate roots. So for example, if I wanted to simplify the fourth root of 16x to the 12, I can split that up into the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of x to the 12, which I rewrite, of course, as x to the 12 over 4. And the fourth root of 16 is just 2. And x to the 12 over 4, that simplifies to x to the third. So my answer there would be 2x to the third. If I want to do the same thing over here, I've got the square root of 4x to the 6th. So I can rewrite that as the square root of 4 times the square root of x to the 6th. Or if you wanted to write it in your power form, you could write it as 4 to the 1 half times x to the 6th to the 1 half. Now 4 to the 1 half, that's just 2. And x to the 6th to the 1 half, that's x to the 6 halves which simplifies down to 3, so it would just be x to the third. Okay, now I want to rewrite these as a single radical. So that means that I want my answer to be in radical form, and I don't want there to just be one radical sign. I don't want there to be multiple radical signs. So, over here, this is the seventh root of 2x to the fourth times the seventh root of 7x squared. If I look back up to my root of a power theorem, I can split this up, or I can go the other way and I can actually combine them. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna combine these using that root of a power form. So I know that this is the same thing as the seventh root of 2x to the fourth times 7x squared. Now if I simplify those, I have 2 times 7, that gives me 14, and x to the 4th times x squared. Remember that if you have a base multiplied by the same base, you add the exponents, so this would be x to the 6th. So right there is my solution. Okay, I can do the same thing over here. I notice that both of these are fifth roots. So if both of those are fifth roots, I can combine those by multiplying them inside the root. So I've got 4x squared times 100x to the 12th y. So if I take 4 times 100, that gives me 400. If I take x squared times x to the 12th, that gives me x to the 14th. Again, if I'm multiplying those bases, I have to add the exponents. And then I've got this y here. Okay, so that is my answer. All right, so the next thing that we can do is called a geometric mean. Basically, in a geometric mean, all you do is you multiply all the numbers in a set and take the nth root of that value. So, for example, if I have five different numbers, I would take the fifth root. I'd multiply them all together, and then I'd take the fifth root of that number. So if I want to find the geometric mean of the integers from 1 to 10 to the nearest hundredth, first of all, I need to multiply all those numbers together. So I'm doing integers from 1 to 10. So I'd have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9 times 10. Okay, then I'm going to take the nth root. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers. So that means I'm going to take the 10th root of that whole thing, and that's going to give me the geometric mean. So, if I do that on my calculator, I've got 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9 times 10. 
Okay, and then I'm going to take that to the one tenth, and I get 4.53, so the nearest tenth. Okay, and I round it up because it asked me to do it to the nearest hundredth. So that is how you find a geometric mean. And that's everything for section 5.